Disc brakes have well and truly embedded themselves into road cycling, and with many people choosing them over the traditional rim brake due to their increased stopping power in the wet as well as increased power and control. However, unlike rim brakes, when traveling with disc brakes, there are a few different things that you need to be aware of, especially when putting your bike in the car on the way to a race, for example, or packing it up for a week away in the sunshine. So in this video, we're gonna share some of our top tips for traveling with disc brakes. When traveling with disc brakes, unless you've got a bike rack or a particularly large car, then chances are you're gonna to have to remove the front wheel or maybe even both wheels to fit them into your car. The hydraulic system on your bike is a self-adjusting system, and this means that when you pull the brake lever, the pads will push out until they hit an immovable object, which in this case is your disc rotor. But if you're traveling with your bike and the wheel isn't in place, when you pull the brake lever, you do run the risk of the pads pushing all the way out and contacting each other, which means when you go to put your wheel back into your bike, you might not be able to fit it back in and you could be stuck wondering what on earth to do next. When you've removed the wheel from your bike, the simplest way to avoid squeezing the brake lever and the caliper closing the brake pads up together is actually very simple and ridiculously cheap, and it is this small little caliper spacer. And chances are you've already had a number of these over the years and inadvertently thrown them away thinking that they were no use at all. But this little piece of plastic here slots into the place of the caliper where the rotor would normally sit and will act as the rotor and stop the brake pads closing up together, stopping you putting the wheel back in. And if you don't have some of these, you can very easily make something similar by folding a piece of card up to make it a similar thickness to what your brake rotor would be. So if you do end up when you're traveling having squeezed the brake lever and you find that the pistons are close enough together that you can't get the wheel in, don't panic because it's actually a pretty simple process to get the pistons to push back into the caliper. And what we can use is a tool such as this, which is from Park Tools, and it's specifically designed to push the pads and the pistons back into the caliper to create space for your rotor to go back in. But if you haven't got something like this, you can just as easily use a plastic tire lever or something that will fit into the gap and carefully push the pads and the piston back in, making sure not to damage anything. The brake rotor is a fundamental part of a disc brake system, and it can be a little bit susceptible to damage, especially if you're packing your bike all the time. And even a slight bang to the rotor could bend it, and it will cause that really annoying rub that some of us have been familiar with on your disc brakes. It's very frustrating and can at times be tricky to get rid of. So it's definitely something to try and avoid. And if you're traveling by plane, we 100% recommend taking the rotors off of the wheels and packing them away somewhere safe so that when you get to your destination and build your bike up, you haven't got to worry about the risk of having any bent rotors. If you are packing your bike into the back of a car and have had to remove the wheels, it's a good idea to pack the wheels last. It's no good just throwing the wheels in and then hoping for the best. Pack the car, pack the bike, and then put the wheels on top of everything. It's no good leaving heavy items on top of your wheels. You will very easily bend and damage the rotors. Not only that, you also run the risk of the rotors hitting onto paintwork of your bike and running the risk of scratching it. No one wants that, do they? So always pack the wheels in last, and if you can, pack them with the rotors facing the top. If you do find that you've got a bent rotor, don't panic though, because it is quite easily fixed. And there are specific tools out there just for the job. But if you don't have any of those tools, you can just as easily use an adjustable spanner and slide that over the rotor, and then you can carefully bend back into shape whichever direction you need to do. It's important though to make sure that the spanner is clean because you don't want to contaminate any of those brake components. And if you are really stuck and as a bit of a last resort, you can try to bend the rotor back into shape using your hands, although you do need to be very careful with this and it's definitely something we don't recommend so only use it as a real last resort. Contaminated brake components can be incredibly annoying and many of us will be familiar with that incredibly frustrating noise that you can hear on long descents and it will drive your friends mad. And there are a number of different reasons that you can have contaminated brake pads. It could be from overzealous spraying of disc brake cleaner or bike protect sprays, just general cleaning and maintenance products. When you're packing your bike, be careful not to get any oil from the chain onto any of the components. And when you're packing the wheels, make sure they're not touching any greasy or oily components. There are dedicated products out there that you can use to cover the brake components and Muckoff even make a disc brake cover. So it's worth investing in the right products to keep your brakes running smooth. When you are packing your bike into the car, make sure you don't touch your brake rotors. The natural oil in your hands can even have a negative impact on the braking. So just be mindful of that too. 
If you find that your brake pads have been contaminated, then the best course of action is often just to replace them with new ones. But some brake pads can be resurrected by cleaning them thoroughly with some disc brake cleaner and you should be able to use them still. And also if you find that the brake rotors themselves have been contaminated, you can often wipe them clean with a nice clean cloth and again use your disc brake cleaner or some isopropyl alcohol. When you've got the wheel removed from the bike, it's a great time to just give the brakes a quick once over and have a look to make sure there's no damage or worn parts. And you can very easily check the brake pads to see if they're wearing and if they've got plenty of life left in them. And whilst you're looking down there, it's important to check there's enough material left on the pads and that the left and right pad is wearing evenly. And if you need to replace them, you can go ahead and do so. Disc brake pads are incredibly simple to replace, but if you do replace them, make sure you bed your brakes in nicely before heading out for your next ride. Disc rotors do also wear, but at a much slower rate to what your brake pads would wear. So when you've got the wheel out, just give the brake rotor a quick once over, and make sure it's not wearing far too thin, or that it's got no heavy scoring marks on any of the braking surface, and that should be fine. If your disc brakes are hydraulic, when you're packing your bike, it's a good idea to check around the lever area, to check all the hosing, to check where it goes down here, and check the caliper for any obvious signs of leaking or damage, as this could lead to brake failure nobody wants that. It's also a good time to check all of the length of the hosing, not just the obvious bits that you can see. Check it all the way over and pay particular attention when you're packing your bike in and out of the car, not to catch any of the brake hoses on any parts of the car, as you could cause damage to the hose, or worst case, pull the hose out of the end of the caliper, meaning that you could have a trip down to the local bike shop. And one final important note when traveling with disc brakes is that when you arrive at your destination and putting your bike back together, just give your brakes a quick check over to make sure everything's fine and it's working as it should. And if you're unsure that your brakes are okay, it's worth taking a bit of time to give it a final check and even head down to the local bike shop because nobody wants brakes that fail halfway through a descent. So safety first. Hope you've enjoyed this video and found some of these tips particularly helpful when traveling with disc brakes. And if you've got any helpful tricks or tips of your own, why not let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks very much.